This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today we're gonna take a look at some tutorials that you may have missed. You will learn about geometry nodes, simulations and animation, as well as a few tips and tricks that will be handy for you. So without further ado, let's get started. But before we do that, I wanna let you know about Skillshare, which is a learning platform that has a lot of classes about 3D modeling, animation, game development, design, you name it. For example, this class called Bender for 3D Beginners create a 3D vaporwave animation. Basically, you will learn the simple and beginner-friendly process of creating a vaporwave style of animation inside Blender. At first, you will learn many basic tools and interface elements within Blender while building and animating your statue. In the modern phase, you will learn how to achieve the vaporwave aesthetic. You will be altering a 3D scanned Roman statue. When it comes to lighting, you will set up a stylized lighting setup, including volumetric lighting. In shading, you will learn how to give the object the appearance of glowing neon lights or golden metal. You will also create a subtle looping animation featuring your vaporwave statue. Lastly, you will render the final animation in Blender so you can share it with friends and others. And the good thing is, Skillshare is very affordable, which allows you to get access to all these fantastic classes. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Now, we all know that a good sky can impact the realism of your scene, but we often get stuck or confused about how to actually add a good sky. You might think that there is only two ways to do that, and that's either by using HDRI or by adding the Blender default sky texture. But actually, there is another better way, and that's what you will be discovering with Max Hay in this tutorial about how to create a beautiful sky inside Blender. You might be asking yourself, what makes this way better than the other ones? Well, to simply answer the question, it is much easier and it looks much better and most importantly, it doesn't add any render time. Moving on, we have a VFX and compositing tutorial by Brad from Light Architect, who is very skilled at both. This time around, he demonstrated how to use Blender's defocus node, which will improve your blur and depth of field. It offers more quality and has more settings that you can experiment with. And Brett explained what these parameters do. With this node, you can truly customize your focus to the extent that you desire. Legos, who doesn't like them, right? I personally always wanted to create some of my models with Legos. And thankfully, we can actually do that in Blender and now with the use of geometry nodes, which will be the thing you will be learning today with this YouTube video made by Joey Carlino. In this one, he will show us how to make anything with Legos using the recent Geometry Nodes features. Don't worry though, it won't have a big or complex node tree. It is actually very simple and easy to do. It won't even take a lot of time. If you need the model you want to be on Legos, then you will do some Geometry Nodes magic and voila, you have a beautiful Lego model with all the materials of the model that you had. You can also control the resolution to decide how much detail you want, which is great. Have you ever thought about how these renders of big and large cityscapes are being made? Well, after watching this, you will realize that it is actually a pretty simple process and it will just take a few minutes. In this video, Max shows us how to create amazing cityscapes in Blender easily and that's done by a free add-on called Blender OSM. He also showcased how to texture all the buildings easily as well as giving some tips on how to highlight only some parts to give more realism to your city. Speaking of simulations, the following tutorial from Blender Made Easy will show you how to make a simulation of bursting rockets using particle systems. You will learn how to build simulations of smoke, fire, collisions, and emitting simulations. You will also learn what each option in the particle system accomplishes, as well as the settings of the fluid and collision simulations. Even though Blender is not the best at simulations, he discovered a surprisingly simple and useful technique to do all this kind of simulation. You will certainly learn something from this, because it goes right to the point. You already know that rigid bodies in Blender can be used to do a variety of different things. And one of the things that you can create with it is simulating tank tracks, which is exactly what Arjun demonstrated in this video. You will learn how to animate tank tracks in Blender using physics, in addition to rigid bodies and constraints, as well as how to create a tank to move along a road with all of its wheels reacting and moving along the surface. 
if you want to understand exactly how rigid bodies and physics simulations function inside Blender, this video will be helpful to you. Now, have you ever needed for some reason to make a jellyfish? Exactly, me neither. I've never thought of making one, but CG Matter has done this wonderful tutorial about making a jellyfish in Blender, so I think it's gonna be a useful thing. The thing you'll be learning though is not actually how to make one, but instead, you will exactly learn about geometry nodes and how it works. He made a medium-sized node tree with a variety of nodes, so you will learn a lot of what these nodes can do. It's always so impressive to see what geometry nodes are capable of, and if you want to learn more about them, CG Matter is one of the right places. A new style of art has been common nowadays, and I have seen a lot of artists using it in their projects. I don't know what to call it, but it's kind of mixed between abstract and inflating objects. So if you want to try this kind of art, you will find this video useful. It's about creating an abstract inflating animation in Blender. This tutorial is different from the others because they didn't explain exactly what they are doing, but he will show you how he's doing it as you follow along with the steps. And when you finish the tutorial, I'm pretty sure you will be learning something. Moving on, some new nodes have been added in Blender 3.4 release, and these new ones will help you make some stuff much more easier and simpler. For example, Joey has showcased how the new instance attributes and geometry nodes work and what you can make with it. Using it, we can create now hair and fuzz without using any particle system with more control and better performance, which is truly amazing and helpful. Now, have you ever made a mistake when using Blender? Or maybe you got frustrated when making something? Well, I'm here to tell you that it is totally fine because even professionals make mistakes and get themselves in tough situations. Therefore, in order to assist you in correcting these mistakes, Southern Shotty 3 d has created a YouTube video demonstrating the top 10 Blender mistakes that artists commit and how to actually fix them. He walks you through these mistakes that are actually made in modeling and rigging as well as while lighting in addition to some rendering mistakes. And at the end of each mistake, he will show you how to fix it in a simple way which will be helpfully helpful to you. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.